How much in weight total did you lose? At the time, she's 14 now, she was 13. Because you started 40? at 210 yeah. and you're 148. I was really surprised that there was something that was going to be able to help me with my journey. I just thought about what my life would be like if I was able to feel better. Everything that we've continued to try to keep up with and read says if at 13 years old you're still struggling with weight, you might end up struggling with weight for the rest of your life. And children that struggle with weight have lower performance in school, have more anxiety and depression, and struggle with peer relationships. I did not want to be a person telling someone how they should look or how they should feel. So that's where I struggled as a parent. I think a lot of parents could be like me, where their kid is, um, you know, exercising and, and eating healthy and kind of at an impasse. I didn't realize how frustrating it was. I was kind of like, you know, hands off, you get what you get, it's gonna be fine, you're this size or that size, it doesn't matter. And it actually really did matter for parents to hear that, that, you know, if you're trying and it's not working, it's not just frustrating to you, it's frustrating to your child then you get to a point where you don't need the meds anymore. So the meds allowed you to handle it in the beginning, but since you did it with the fasting, it is no longer an issue. How has it been this last month not being on the medication? Um, I personally feel it's... Hello, hello, and thank you guys so much for taking some time to you know share your experience. Uh, this is a less common scenario, right? Children, teens, sub 18 years old, dealing with real struggles, weight issues, and, and a solution that actually works. So I appreciate you guys you know, taking the time to share your experience with my clinic and, and this program. Um, why don't we start with just kind of where you started from and how you how you found us and ended up there? Sure. I was listening to a podcast on The Daily um, in January of last year and was talking about childhood obesity and the way that the American Academy of Pediatrics had talked about it and thought about it. And the thing that really I heard the most, it said that children that struggle with weight um, have lower performance in school, are um, have more anxiety and depression, and struggle with peer relationships. And that made me think so much that it's I guess just more of a mental health issue combined with a physical health issue. And as a mom, Issa's my third daughter, had always been just very body positive and you get what you get and you live with it and it made me think about it kind of in a different way and we started talking about it in a different way um, instead of just this is who you are and this is how you are in like what I guess would health look like? How would that look different? And how could we, like as, um, like without it, I just really struggled with it being something that was negative to me. I did not want to be a person telling someone how they should look or how they should feel. So that's where I struggled as a parent. Yeah, no, that's, that's definitely challenging. But you were still searching. You were searching was the key, right? Trying to find the right answer. And then did you say it was your pediatrician that ended up referring you to us or? Yeah. So this, the podcast came out in January. I went straight to the pediatrician. She's like, that's ironic. I was just listening to it too. Read the American Academy of Pediatrics. I have no experience with, um, with any medical weight loss at all and gave me two numbers and yours was one of them in Denver. I called um, and asked both if you had any experiences or were willing to work with anybody at the time. She's 14 now, she was 13. Um, and yeah, you guys were open to it and wanted to talk about it. I made an appointment with Issa um, with an initial consultation and kind of said what we're talking about right now. Isa, if you want to kind of share from your perspective, like, what was it like when you originally, if you can take yourself back to when you first started and you heard, you know, not just the injections, but the, but the approach, right? What we were going to be doing, you know, skipping time uh, as far as your eating, like, what was that all like when you remember back then? When, when I first started, I was really surprised 
that there was something that was going to be able to help me with my journey and helping me with my weight and feeling better about myself. And then I was I heard about what I had to do as in terms of the shot and I was I was a little nervous at first cuz I wasn't very I'm not very great with shots. Um but after some thinking, I was like, this will be a good thing for me. And I was like, I can overcome this. And and I just thought it'd be, I just thought about what my life would be like if I was able to feel better in myself, about myself and my skin. Yeah, yeah, I know that's, it's hard, you know? And just in case you didn't know this, or I'm sure you did, but I was literally there with you, you know, when I, I, I lost 100 pounds when I was 16 years old. So I know exactly, I can speak from experience to be young and to not be happy with where you're at in, in, in your own skin. So yeah, yeah, I mean, it feels like eons ago, but, but no, I definitely remember. That's part of why I love what we do. And yeah, when you started, we didn't have as much experience. This is a, you know, pediatrics for this medicine and, and is, is new, right? And you know, there's still, I think, a lot of debate going on whether it's right or not. And, you know, I'm, I'm glad you guys were able to and willing to give it a shot. And I'm, I'm so happy that the results have been so amazing. So so let's talk more about that. So that's the shots now. Let's talk about the the changes that we, you know, had you implement as far as the fasting and how did that fit into your school schedule and, and everything like that? Well, at first I, it was hard thinking about how I should fast and when I should fast. But after going through my school schedule and figuring out things, I figured out the best way to, for me to eat in that eight hour period during school. And I just started, um, it was at peak. So that was yeah, so I had, I, yeah, something. we had a morning break for like 15, 20 minutes at around 9.30 ish. and. We agreed on I would start there and eat from 9.30 to 5.30. Um, and it was difficult at first, but after about a week and a half or so, I it started feeling more comfortable and I got it got easier to do. Awesome. How much in weight total did you lose? So you started at 210 yeah. and you're 148. So like basically 60-ish, you know, around there. And we're still doing the, the intermittent fasting, I think for us, what surprised us is we really thought we were healthy and eating healthy and we don't do fast food. We didn't have a ton of snacks, no sodas, all that stuff like in her whole life. Um, and so I think when she started, we were just kind of like, well, you know, what more could we do? And in our minds kind of, oh, well, probably not that much, but it was significant. And I think now she um, has a different schedule at school. So she doesn't eat in the morning. She starts eating at what time? 11 something? Um, it was 11.15 for um, my first semester until... Beginning of this week, now I start at 12.25 ish. And then finishes, I mean, I would say six, I, six, yeah, or, six seven. or seven. Yeah. And it's been significant. I think that is one of the biggest things because we have just been like, we don't want to be a short fix. We want something that she can sustain for her life and something that feels healthy with her still growing. Um, and like you said, the research is still out there, but everything that we've continued to try to keep up with and read, you know, says if at 13 years old, you're still struggling with weight, you might end up struggling with weight for the rest of your life. And if it's something you can manage in that time frame, it seems significant that you don't struggle with it as much. So I think it's more than just the medication is really trying to, you know, change the lifestyle. And I don't know if you remember, but she's a dancer, so she was dancing four nights a week and eating relatively healthy and, you know, not doing all the things that, you know, sitting around and different things like that and still didn't see any change until she came to you guys. And it was significant right away, I thought. And so that, motiva that motivated her to keep going, you know, because she wasn't loving the shots for sure. <laughs> That's huge guys for, you know, for everybody listening. So 
probably not the typical scenario, right? You actually were doing some of the right things that we would instruct somebody to do first, you know? And so certainly it sounds like you're saying the main lifestyle change that was a big difference was the fasting. Everything else was sort of kind of already in play more or less, you know? So obviously, you know, you tell me, but like taking the medication made it easier for you to start the fasting, yeah? Yes, yes. I think it was significant for her. I think the suppression of the appetite was enormous because I think other times she tried not necessarily any kind of diets like cutting back, but maybe eating healthier or doing things like that. And I don't know, I feel like you can tell me now that you were always kind of hungry all the time. Is that yeah. true? Yeah. And that that was kind of one of the things she said lately, just kind of not feeling that hunger and feeling full. Yeah. Am I, is, am I, is that yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, yes. I, I think, I don't even think she knew, I don't even think she knew that she was hungry in the past. Like, I don't even think she knew that that was like noise in her head. I think that now that it's not in her head, she says it's not in her head. But yeah. I think before it was just like, that's you, that's who you are. You're just always kind of feel like that's, you know. Yeah. I don't know. So that's significant. I think that's significant for a young person. Like, you know, I think it's hard enough for me to like not drink coffee or, you know, exercise regularly or do whatever. But for a young person who has so many other things going on and I'm not saying they're not as motivated, but they're not in that adult mindset yet. And I think that kept her motivated. So I feel like the medicine part of it is extremely significant initially and if not for a while. Yeah, no, totally, totally. But I think it's like, that's the one thing, right? Like, I think you don't know, like, oh, I was like going to grab food or going to get food or going to do whatever. No, like, not no, even. it's just not even thinking yeah, about it. Yeah, it's not it. even thinking about it. So then it's like, you have all this other time to be, you know, doing other things and not. Yeah, I don't know. I think I just like. And just like the medication kind of being like when you left, we just were saying like, I think that you d you don't know that that's not the way that other people feel because I personally am not like, oh, you know, I want to eat. I want to get something I want to, you know, but not having it, then she realizes how much other time she has that she isn't thinking about that. So yeah. I think that's hugely significant for a young person, for an adult too, but for a young person who then has so many hours to do other things that aren't related to eating. No, I, I, huge, very, very, very much. So when was your last shot? When was the last time you had to inject or did inject? That was the end of December. Yeah. So it's been about a month, okay? So this is huge, this is huge. So, so being as candid and as honest with, with, with how you feel, Issa, how has it been this last month not being on the medication as First, just overall, before I ask specific questions, like how does it feel for you? Um, I personally feel it's not that much different, I feel like, because for that period of time, I got used to it and it started just being like regular to my body and now that's kind of how my body is just functions. And no, that's so cool. That's so cool, so cool because if you were to ask a scientist or if you were to ask researchers, they would expect that the, the hunger would be coming back dramatically. And this is where I come from, whether it's a child or an adult, you know, in my opinion, if we can address, you know, with fasting and other things, but mostly fasting, sort of the driver of the issue, like you said, then you get to a point where you don't need the meds anymore. So the meds allowed you to handle it in the beginning, but since you did it with the fasting, it is no longer an issue, right? Um, so that's super cool. I would say just to prepare you, don't freak out even if you do get a little bit of hunger here and there. If it does start coming in a little bit, I would actually just tell you now that might happen a little bit, but just to maintain the kind of confidence that you have now that if it does start coming back a little bit, just start increasing the fasting within a comfortable range but that's assuming it even comes back at all. So that's awesome that you're doing as good as you are. That's great, I'd love to hear that. Yeah, I think it's great. And I had talked about it to you, but she hadn't done like the long fasting. Um, just, we had talked about it. We had said like, let's see how she does. And she did fine without it. And that was just part of her still growing and changing and us not really wanting to, I mean, I think, do you tried a couple Saturdays, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, but I think in general, that was just an important thing for us that she wasn't ever like out of her comfort zone or 
like into and so that is something she can throw in like a little bit longer if it does seem like i guess she's getting hungry or not feeling the same yeah yeah it's a nice little tool to keep in your back pocket you know right now you have a format of what's maintenance and so just stick to that you know life's gonna ebb and flow there's gonna be months where stress levels are higher and when stress levels are higher things like your exercise change your sleep change your body's still growing so this is this is very much a changing thing so every month or two you know sitting down with mom and, and evaluating where you're at and seeing if any changes need to be made but you're, you're leaps and bounds ahead of obviously where you were at before and I'm, I'm so happy that you guys are willing to take this time and share the story because yeah like you said there's a lot of people that probably don't know <laughs> something like this could be done for them right and i think that was the piece that when i spoke to you the other day that i just wanted to share because i did struggle with it as a parent and as a parent of a female and as a parent of a female in this generation with media and and the way you should look and the way you could look and different things like that and I think that what I've noticed the most just as a mom is just her confidence with herself, her enjoyment of things that maybe she wasn't enjoying before. Her enjoyment of dance for sure has been significant. Mm -hmm. um, she was in theater, still is in theater, just being up on stage and feeling more confident. And I think those things as a mom lead into other things with like very nice friends and nice partners and um, you know, being a nice person in your community. And so to me, it became so much more than um, just the way that she was looking at the way she feels and the way she interacts with other people. And I think a lot of parents could be like me where their kid is, um, you know, exercising and, and eating healthy and doing different things and, and kind of at an impasse. And I think I didn't realize how frustrating it was for Isa until we started, you know, under like talking about different things with the pediatrician, talking about different things with you. Because like I said, I was kind of like, you know, hands off, you get what you get, it's going to be fine. You know, if you're this size or that size, it doesn't matter. And it actually really did matter and it mattered significantly. And so I think for parents to hear that, that, you know, if you're trying and it's not working, um, it's not just frustrating to you, it's frustrating to your child. And then I didn't realize the stress that I was putting on her, um, just being worried. I don't, we didn't talk about it. We didn't have an issue about it, but that I think she totally felt, you know, if she wasn't looking the way she wanted to or feeling the way she wanted to, I think she took it personally instead of, you know, realizing that it was like we know now, I think just a disease like any other disease. And like I told you, if someone would have diagnosed her with cancer, I wouldn't be sitting around going, well, let me think, should I do chemo or not? Yeah. Should I do radiation or not? Like it, once the, the ball started rolling, it just seemed like so obvious of like, of course, like she needs that support. This is what we have to do. And I think, uh, I think it really matters. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for taking the time to share the story. Definitely. We, we got to get this information back to our pediatrician. So since we've seen you, we're in North Carolina now and we were in Colorado. So the pediatrician still in Colorado, but I do have a relationship with the pediatrician and did update her and will continue to because she's been interested. Um, and I think it's like that education piece for everybody. Uh, absolutely. Well, I appreciate you guys so much. And uh, yeah, we'll be talking soon. Thank you guys so much. Definitely. Thank, Thank you. you.